Good afternoon, everyone. So today, I welcome you again to my YouTube channel. And today, we'll be discussing a chapter from Cast 11. We are not afraid to die. We all can be together. This is a tale, a story of heroic deeds and extreme courage of a family of business people, a 37-year-old man, Gordon Cook, his wife, Mary, and two children, aged six and seven years of age. How they try to ape the journey of Captain James Cook, which he took in 1776. And in 1976, they tried to do the same journey 200 years after and see what are the troubles and the problems they encounter in the way. Round the world journey in their own ship, the Wave Walker which is not an easy deed. But let's go, let's begin this story. So first of all, we'll go to the important words. What is a voyage? Voyage is a long journey in sea or space. Honing means improving. Not is a nautical mile. Gigantic is huge. Jib is a small sail, which usually is used by the sailors when they are in sea and the storm is there because the huge sail, the main sail cannot be used because it will take the sway away the boat from the position they are supposed to go so that is it small dip is used impending is something which is about to happen any day impending danger ominous means suggest suggesting something bad is going to happen abandon when you leave something alone starboard is the right side of the boat or a ship midday calls out the distress signals which you make in the sea the radio signal for help Whenever you are in trouble in the sea, you say mayday, 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 and the radio signals are received by the office, met offices, and they, of course, respond. Improvise when you try to make innovative things, when you try to change the pattern of something and try to introduce your own skills into it. That is improvisation. Like we are improvising this education system and we are trying to take this online classes. This is all improvisation. Sextant is an instrument for measuring and angles and distances used to calculate position in the ship or the aircraft, which is very in old times. Of course, now we have got those GPS and other devices. It's redundant now. Caricatures are the funny drawings and pictures you usually make. Uh, children are fond of making it on the desks, and the graffiti on the walls, and even on the backs of the copy, and all these wonderful pictures which you make of people, your friends, your fathers, your whoever you love, you know, basically, that is called caricature. Draw caricatures, it shows your creativity. Right? So, we are not afraid to die if we can all be together by Gordon Cook and Alan East. So let's read it. This is Captain James Cook, who undertook this journey in 1776, and his journey, he was a British explorer, navigator, cartographer, and ultimately rose to the rank of captain in the Royal Navy, the Navy of, U of UK. His journey <clears throat> is going to be aped by the narrator and his wife, two children, along with two crewmen, which they hire to take them through. And let's see what happens in the story. These are the routes which they take. The routes of Captain James Cook's voyages. The first voyage is shown in red, second voyage in green, and the third voyage in blue. The route of Cook's Proof following his death is shown as national rule and of course he died. And you can see <clears throat> they try to ape the same route throughout the world. And you know, as if you know this, uh, when you move from Africa, when you move from Africa to Australia through this Indian Ocean, it is the world's the most dangerous feared seas, sea routes, because a lot of gale storms and other winds. You encounter and this is what you should do. So let's move on. These are the characters in the story narrator, his wife Mary, Jonathan, the son, Suzanne, the daughter. They were six and seven years of age, respectively. American Larry Vigil and Swiss Herb Sigler, the crewman. So they help him a lot during this journey. Let's introduce the characters to you. The narrator, a man of great courage, Ronan Cook, of course, commitment and conviction, proved to be the best captain as well as the best father 
with unpending gift and determination. He was a wonderful person. Mary, his wife, who always stood by her husband's side in all times of difficulty, difficulties and considered her dreams as her own. Suzanne, the daughter, she was a brave girl. Her bravery toughened her father's resolve to fight the sea's strong storm. It was the courage shown by the children, basically, which made the father work very, very hard. Jonathan shows of bravery and his fearlessness in the face of the death highlights his characters. He rejuvenated the hope of his father by remarking, we are not afraid to die if we can all be together. A wonderful line which punctuates the This is the Wake Walker ship. You should be familiar with the terms. The main mast, the central pole on which this big sail rests, slide on this. Then we have the jib sheet, this pair lead, out hull, boom, main sheet, stern. This is the stern, the front back part of the ship, rudder, with which you move the ship pillar. Port side, keel, the central board, balances the ship. Hull, this is the hull. Doesn't allow any water to come in or go out. Bridges, the bow, the boom wang, shroud, <coughs> jib, stay, and jib, the smaller <coughs> sail, which is used in the winds. Extreme conditions, winds, this big sail is not used, the small jib is used. Spender and the mast. So this is the whole ship, the way Walker. We'll be reading these uh, terms again and again in the story, so you should be familiarized with this story. And the terms. So the first leg of the journey, they presently sailed down from west coast of Africa to Cape Town. Everything was fine. From west coast of Africa, they moved to Cape Town, and everything was good. They didn't have any trouble. And before this, may I tell you? They tried to hone their seafaring skills in British waters, the Gibraltar and other areas they went to, and they tried their best <coughs> to hone, to practice the skills so that, because they knew this huge journey will require a lot of trials and tribulations. So they tried their best to practice whatever they could. After practicing, they moved. Then further, they sailed to Southern Indian Ocean, which is going to be difficult. Now I'll give you date-wise breakup, what all happened. July 1976, the journey begins from Plymouth, England. Good weather and cheerful days from England via west coast of Africa. Two sailors joined the voyage in Cape Town, American Larry Vigil and Swiss Herb Sigler. On December 25th, 1976, Merry Christmas, voyages reaches 3,500 kilometers east of Cape Town. Cape Town, if you know, is in the southernmost tip of Africa and is the capital of South Africa. The wonderful cricket team, the wonderful rugby team, and of course, they have, they have hosted the World Cup football also in a very good nation, which is called the Rainbow Nation. When you were in 10th standard, you should have, you must have read about uh, Nelson Mandela, who apartheid, who was from South Africa. So that's about Cape Town. The weather was still atrocious. Atrocious means bad, not very good. They celebrated Christmas. The spirit of Christmas has to be kept alive. So they celebrated Christmas and enjoyed. And New Year's Day saw no improvement in the weather. Weather was bad. So when the weather is bad, the danger is impending. Anything can happen in the sea. So let's see what happened. The first sign of impending disaster. They encountered strong winds on the second day at Cape Town and continued for a few weeks. Waves rose to 15 meter high, as high as last year, which was very difficult. So let's see actually what happened to the ship. Let's see what, uh, how they encountered these waves and everything, what all happened. Let's try to discover it through a video. So now, there we have. On the January 2nd morning, the waves rose very high, the, they were sailing slowly and the ship rose to top of each wave as they hit it. The wind screamed to slow the boat down, they dropped the storm sail and put the heavy rope in the loop across the back part of the boat 
equipped themselves with lifelines, oil skills, and waited for the danger to pass over. Oil skills, because you know the sea water is salty. If you enter this, if you fall over, you will lose a lot of liquids in the body. So, because of the salt forces. So, now see, the ship is moving. It's very difficult for them to maneuver the ship in this storm. The first sign of approaching disaster came with evil silence. And now, what happens is that everything is going to become dark, and then the waves are going to rise up, and it will be very, very difficult for the ship to move. The wave broke over the ship, and the narrator's head hit against the wheel. He felt as if he was being swallowed by the waves, but he did not lose any patience. It was difficult. You can see it in the video that the simple plain waters become rough, and the when the waters became rough, it was so difficult for them. And see what happens now. This is it. The narrator is trying to maneuver the ship, but the waves are coming. And the boat is almost going to be turned over. The masts and poles lay flat. The narrator grabbed the rails and was tossed around the deck like a rag doll. His chest bones cracked, his teeth was broken, and his mouth was filled with blood. But he hung on to the wheel. This is it. This is how what happened to the ship. You can see how the water has all come in and it is becoming difficult by that moment to maneuver the ship. There was water all over. It had flown below, and but there was no way to examine the exact position. Suddenly, the lid over the opening in the deck was thrown open and, and everything was upside down. So that was the first sign of impending disaster. This was January 2nd, 1977. What happened? The gigantic waves in the morning sailing with only a small storm jib and were still making eight knots. Knots, if you remember, are the, uh, the measurement of distance in the sea, some 1800 meters or something. The ship rises to the top of each wave, we saw that. Endless enormous seas <coughs> rolling towards the ship, the screaming of the wind and spray painful to ears. The waves <coughs> was making so much of sound and it was painful to the ears sometimes during diwali we hear a lot of crackers this is painful to the ears or when you are in the city those honking and everything becomes difficult to listen to hear so that's what happened there prepared to face the sea's fury but the narrator and his family are prepared to see face the sea's fury means their anger of the sea the storm dip dropped even the storm jib was dropped because if you have the sail or the uh, jib, it will maneuver the ship towards a different direction where you don't want to go. So you take it off so that the ship or the boat doesn't get lost in the sea. The heavy mooring rope <coughs> in a loop across the stern lashed. Everything was uh, tied with the rope. Double lashed everything. They tied everything doubly so that it doesn't get vanished into the sea. Went through life rough drill. Attached lifelines, donned oil skins and life jackets. Oil skins, as I told you, is very, very important because when you're in the sea, if you can fall over, then the whole water of your body will move out because of this turgidity of the sea. It's uh, salty, you know, this chemical biology. Life jackets are required because you should not be drowning in the sea. Even if you are a very good swimmer, you need life jackets because it hours and hours if you are in water, it is difficult to survive. Then, <clears throat> disaster and the aftermath. What happened afterwards? 6 p.m. <laughs> Tremendous explosion shook the deck. The powerful flow of water broke over the ship. Wave walker was getting sunk and the captain was badly injured. Captain kept courage and found the wheel and lined up the stern for the next wave. He was ready the next wave so let's see what happened on the six at 6 p.m waves higher than the ship chase the ship the wave hits the back of the ship the wave breaks the starboard the ship was about to sink mary narrator's wife took the steering wheel laddie and her up the water from the deck an immediate action was required water level rose threateningly pumps stopped functioning Pumps are required to pump the water out of the ship. You know the reef. obvious reasons. If the water is there in the ship, the ship will sink. So pumps are required. 
electric pumps were used but they were also of no use later on because they also stopped functioning there was a uh, short circuit there also all radio signals were blocked no communication with boss base was possible sue's eyes bumped against the wooden tanks and it swelled up and it was very difficult for the little girl to see so let's see how it all happened there you are <coughs> things are getting tough for them <coughs> Tried their best. Plus, this is the inner part of the boat. <coughs> they tried to control the situation, but nothing could be controlled so easily. <laughs> Things were getting tough. Was difficult maneuvering the ship. See the sea storm. The crewmen shows off great strength. They started pumping out water and settled to make necessary repairs to save the boat from sinking. They managed to stretch canvas and secure waterproof hatch cover across gaping holes. The, there were big, huge holes there in the ship. They tried to cover those holes with canvas and other things, whatever they could manage. On January 3rd, 1977, what happened? They had survived 48 hours. <coughs> Auxiliary engine had failed, and then in January 4th, January 4th, 1977, water level almost deep, still unable to hoist sail on the mast for the fear of the ship's possible wreckage, since the ship can be wrecked or broken because if they hoist the sail on the mast, mast would break over the whole ship because of the pressure of the wind. So they did not do that. They hoisted the small jib. Ship is required, a small sail is required in order to maneuver the ship to a given direction. <clears throat> Headed to the direction of Isle Amsterdam. Not very certain about it, they were. Isle Amsterdam is a very small island in the Indian Ocean. It is like a pinprick in the ocean, very difficult to uh, find without the sextant, without the compass, and with a uh, improvised storm jib on the ship. It was very difficult for them to reach that point, but they tried their best. Captain really maneuvered the boat with his best skills he could, and he was able to do it. And they ate meal after 48 hours. They were hungry also, but that hunger was not that much of a difficulty, that much of a problem, then saving their life was. So the priority was saving their life, and once everything was settled, a bit settled, the <clears throat> danger was a little less they ate something. Of course, they could eat biscuits and whatever was there with them in the boat. But there was another big problem. Electric pumps short-circuited. The water could not be pumped now. Water level rising threateningly. And daughter Suzanne was badly injured. That was a big problem now. 4th and 5th January. Time was quite crucial now. Let's see what happened then. After 36 hours of continuous pumping, there was only few waves left, or few little water was left. They hoisted the storm jib and headed in direction of two islands. Black clouds built at 4 p.m. and the sea was getting its waves higher and higher. So January 5th, 1977. Weather became worse. Jonathan says, Daddy, if we all dying, we all are, we are not afraid to die. If we can all be together. More water flowed in. Sue made a caricature and showed it to the parents to laugh for a while. And the caricature had beautiful drawing of the father and the mother. The narrator went to sleep. He was really you know, happy and nostalgic about this little daughter's show of courage. And he vowed to himself that yes, I'll be finding it out and saving them all so whatever resources he had <clears throat> whatever broken compass he had he tried his best to maneuver the ship with a given uh, speed and uh, a given to a given direction in order to reach Isle Amsterdam and he had given a time that evening by evening five o'clock they'll be able to reach and he was so tired he slept after predicting the ships reaching Isle Amsterdam about 5 p.m. but at when he woke up at around 6 p.m. 
he was not sure that he will be making up to Isle Amsterdam. Where is this Isle Amsterdam? Let's discover first. This is, you can see on the globe, Isle Amsterdam in the Indian Ocean. This is a small island, French base, beautiful life, sea life. Not many people live there, but of course there is. People do live there. Small little, you can say, wonderful gated facility. Basically a naval base, so you will see the naval people over there. The beautiful bridge. And here the ship reaches Isle Amsterdam. And when the father wakes up, is woken up by the daughter, tell, the child tells the, the father that you are the best captain in the world. The father says, why? But we would have missed the island because it's late. I predicted that I'll be <clears throat> able to reach by 5 o'clock and I, it's already late. But she says, no. You can see the island and we have made it to reach the island which was fully possible and the wind will slow down and they were able to reach the island now what is the chapter all about it's showing off the exemplary courage jonathan said we are not afraid to die if we all can be together jonathan's courage and sue's bravery instead of her bumped head inspired the captain to fight the sea and protect him the initiative taken by the children and the courage shown by the children really helped the father to, in fact, motivated the father to work very hard to fight the waves. He was able to. When you are in adversity, if you have positive people around, if you have people around who encourage you, you will be able to do anything. You must have seen in the cricket matches or any football matches, whenever the ball reaches Ronaldo, or Messi, or the or Sachin Tendulkar, or Dhoni, or Virat Kohli, come to please. What happens? The crowd start chanting, you know, Sachin, Sachin. And what happens? It gives that determination, that motivation to a pair, and they are able to do. To your school teams also, you so much of encouragement is given from outside. Those wonderful, nice cheerings uh, <clears throat> which we do, it helps them. It motivates them to do well. So that's what motivated the father. So safe at last, on January 6th, they saw the wave walker ride out the storm and wind eased. They expected to see the island at 5 o'clock, but they reached at 6 o'clock in the evening and they touched the shore at Amsterdam. This is the Isle Amsterdam. I've already told you about this. But what is the significance of this title? The title is taken from Jonathan's remark, We are not afraid to die if we can all be together. When he tells his father, that we are not afraid to die. If we are together, we'll fight it out. Father gets motivated. He says, who says we are going to die? We will fight it out. Fine. And of course, they win. It brings out bravery, grit and courage of captain's family and love of each member <coughs> as for each other. That is important. And whenever you are against the wall, you have to give your best. When you give your best, you always come out primes. That is the main motive of the story. Themes, more themes are human nature of knowing and taking on challenges. You should be ready to take on challenges. That is called adventure. Adventure is taking risk, trying to risk yourself and get into two new heights. That's what they did. Human instinct for survival is very, very strong. Whenever you push against the wall, you give your best. Human bravery, grit, courage, unity, and determination, which is the story, is exhibited even by small children an element of luck they were extremely lucky in the sea <clears throat> it was not very easy for them to maneuver the uh, you can say the big gale storms and come out but it was uh, luck that made them reach that little island of isle amsterdam faith in one's optimism not despairing hope even in difficult circumstances and sharp presence of mind the sharp presence of mind of the captain and it helped them move out of that storm. Instrumental qualities of a captain which proved journey successful even after strong hurdles. There were strong hurdles, but the very optimistic and very, very smart captain took them out because he had practiced a lot. He had extreme, you can say, <clears throat> confidence in his 
knowledge and extreme courage of course helped by the children also thank you so much i hope you have understood the story for any other problems you can log in back or contact me thank you so much keep subscribing it looking for the channel post more videos keep safe enjoy yourself thank you so much thanks a lot for watching this video please keep subscribing it for the rest of the videos thank you for the next time